Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the apocalypse. So I'm out here doing what I imagine I would be doing during the apocalypse, which is hiding in the woods in the mountains, waiting to be killed by a, an animal or easily defeated by a larger, stronger male. I'm out here reshooting this in the rain because the audio was bad on the last one. I've also had a little bit of a headache all day. Isn't it weird how a headache is like a subjective thing that you can't actually prove is really happening to you? Isn't it weird that it's impossible to prove if anybody else except for yourself is real? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. So today I'm going to be talking about something that has bothered me for a very long time. As a video game reviewer, I've noticed that a lot of reviewers out there are kind of hacks, kind of frauds. A lot of people out there writing reviews for, you know, IGN, uh, Polygon, um, other assholes. The volume of work that these people have to put out is so enormous that a lot of the time, they only really have time to play a game for 30 minutes to two hours before having to churn out some absolute garbage. And this has gone on for so long in the gaming industry that it's gotten to the point where developers are starting to develop their games. I stepped in a hole. The developers are starting to develop their games based on this fact. And the all-time greatest example of this is the beginning of Fallout 4. And to prove just how objectively insane the first hour of this game is, I'm going to hand it back over to review Jacob. First, let me get this out of the way immediately. I don't think Fallout 4 is a bad game. It's a pretty great open-world first-person shooter. I just think framing it as an RPG is insane and the first hour is very transparently review bait. And Todd is fun to make fun of. That being said, if we are limited to talking about the first hour or so of the game and just how fucking completely insane it is, we need to divide this into two parts. You've got the narrative part that makes up the first half and the gameplay part that makes up the second half. The narrative section is the classic annoying waste of time that the first part of every modern Bethesda game always is. There's a reason this scene is one of the biggest memes in gaming. And if anyone remembers the first part of Fallout 3, it's not much better. Do you want hours of exhilarating gameplay watching a married couple argue in the bathroom? Do you want next generation baby tickling action? Do you want to get mad about 1950s Americans being able to afford starter homes? Do you want to see Todd? Then the first what feels like 25 years of Fallout 4's gameplay is for you. But let's rewind a minute and go back to the very start, because that thing I said a second ago about this game being framed as an RPG being insane kicks off pretty much immediately. In the opening cutscene, we get a history breakdown of the Fallout universe's alternate history. Blah blah nuclear energy, whatever, China bad. And by the way, if you want me to believe China is bad, you probably shouldn't make the guy look like the coolest Chinese man on Earth. But I want to draw your attention to two things here. One, this is being narrated by the male player character. And two, the male player character is the only one we hear about in this cutscene that has any military experience. Now when we get into the bathroom, the male player character is the default option. It is very, very clear for these reasons, and for a lot of other tonal reasons, that this game is entirely built around the assumption that the player is going to be the male character. Also, can you imagine how fucking embarrassing it would be if your wife walked in on you in the bathroom doing this? War never changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the veterans hall tonight, hon. I would file for a divorce and change my name the second I got caught doing that. I would rather get caught beating off to Rogue the Bat, and that isn't a joke. I'm being dead serious. So let me explain what I mean when I say it's obvious that the default character is 
what is this guy's name? Nate? Fucking Nate in Nora's infinite wasteland? Let me explain why Nate is very obviously supposed to be the intended character from a narrative perspective. Aside from voicing the entire intro, and being the one who is in the mirror first, he's also the only one with a military background, which makes it easier to understand why he would just instantly be able to use power armor right off the bat. Nora is a lawyer. Have you ever seen a lawyer do this? To further prop up my point that this game isn't really designed to be an RPG, from this point forward, regardless of which character you pick, there is only one path that makes sense. If you're a human being, and you see this, your next move is probably going to be one of pure rage and revenge, especially if you wake up in a world where literally everyone you have ever known and everything you have ever owned has been obliterated. Obviously, you're going to join the Brotherhood of Steel. Obviously, you're going to go fucking ape shit on everyone and everything to get your son back. This is an RPG that just feels on rails from start to finish, which sort of defeats the entire purpose of an open-ended RPG. To put this into perspective, let's look at a Fallout game where the writing is actually good. Fallout New Vegas. And first off, wipe that fucking soy smile off your face, because I think New Vegas is one of the most overrated games of all time, despite being pretty well written, so don't get excited. The player character in New Vegas is a person who got shot in the head and can't remember anything, but has already been wandering the wasteland for years. In this context, it's easy to believe him or her being literally anyone and being capable of literally anything. This story can be anything, and that's what makes it a true RPG. Modern military experience with no resistance to whatever future radiation and diseases doesn't really feel very useful in the far future of the funny Fallout Wasteland, and being able to file paralegal paperwork sure as shit won't help you against a pack of silly little ghouls. Fallout 3 also had this problem with the Vault Dweller, but this video is starting to get away from itself. No one at Bethesda can write to save their life, and at this point, we are getting into a too complex and too far-reaching review of the whole game. Remember, this video is just the first hour. The point is, from the perspective of setting up a story with a tone that makes any fucking sense, or setting up a good tabula rasa type character to begin a 60 plus hour RPG journey, the first 20 minutes, or whatever, of Fallout 4 are absolutely unhinged. At the end of the day, does any of this matter or affect the quality of the gameplay? No, not really, but my job is to give you guys opinions to argue about in the comment section to drive engagement. So, there you go. After getting caught by our wife LARPing in front of the mirror, we walk around a little in the house to try to establish an emotional connection, or something. We talk to Todd in one of the most annoying ways to decide character stats ever conceived of, and then, oh, no the bombs are dropping, what a surprise. We better get on over to the vault. Another petty side note here, if you were close enough to a nuclear blast to catch the shockwave this fast, you would be instantly vaporized in this scene, but it looks cool, so who gives a shit? We get into the vault, no one cares, we get frozen, kill wife, okay, now we're out of the vault. There was a lot of stuff I could nitpick here for a lot of different reasons, like, I don't think this would be my reaction to waking up 200 years in the future and figuring out that the Carboniferous period started again, and the giant bugs are back. Giant? Roaches? What the hell? Now at this point, there might be some people that disagree with where this video is about to go. Technically, this is where the game becomes open world. On paper, you can do whatever you want from here forward, but more realistically, the overwhelming majority of players, and virtually any person playing this game to review it, are going to do the first two quests, and for a bunch of reasons that should be obvious to you if you have more than a couple dozen brain cells, this is the way the game was very clearly intended to be played. 
First, we run around with the robot butler and do a quick gameplay tutorial. And then he says, hey, go to this spot moving south and make sure you walk by the gas station. Following the quest marker and these instructions, we get to the dog, the only ally 99% of people are going to use. The ally that got the most marketing, the one that gets all the goofy little customization options. Just dog for free right off the top. Of course, now we get to the museum, shoot some guys, meet Preston. Preston's elite cyberpunk hacker man mechanic, or whatever the fuck this guy is supposed to be, comes up with a wacky scam of getting access to the power armor on the roof and using the minigun to repel the raiders. All you need to do to pull this off is head downstairs and grab the fusion core real quick, and then here we go, maybe 20 to 30 minutes into the game, and we're sitting in a power armor suit with a heavy weapon fighting a deathclaw. So let's go over this one more time. In the first 30 minutes or so of the game, we got the dog for free. We didn't do a side quest. We didn't need to explore for a bit. We did nothing to earn the dog's trust. We have no idea who used to live in this gas station. We just get dog. And like I said, most players are going to keep the dog for their entire playthrough because dog. Next, we have access to the power armor. Obviously the strongest protection in the game, and we have a heavy weapon, which are the game's strongest weapon class, and we just killed a Deathclaw, the flagship difficult enemy for the entire Fallout series. Where the fuck are we supposed to go from here, Todd? This is an entire game's worth of character progression in 20 fucking minutes. It would be one thing if you got the dog, got the armor, and got the minigun, but like the Deathclaw destroys the armor and the gun at the end of the fight and runs away from you or something. So now you get sort of a Metroid type thing where the game goes, okay, this is how powerful you will be later, but right now we're going to take away all your cool toys and then the scary Deathclaw runs away to come back later. And you and your cute dog have to go on an adventure to become strong again. But nope, just keep them. We don't give a shit. And I know there's going to be some smartasses out there like, Oh, well, the armor is damaged and you only have one battery, so it takes a really long time to get the full armor. You're wrong, and it doesn't. If you are even remotely thorough exploring the game's map, you'll be inundated with fusion cores, and the armor will repair itself very quickly. It's extremely obvious that the game is designed for you to make heavy and frequent use of the power armor from the very start. The entire opening sequence is absolutely insane pacing for one reason and one reason only. Review scores. The first hour or so of Fallout 4 is review bait, plain and simple. Todd knows that most game reviewers are hacks. Todd knows that most game reviewers play a game for about two hours max before they work on some article or the video. Todd knows that if he packs as many wacky action sequences and emotional story beats into the first hour, people will write dog shit reviews about how Fallout 4 has the wildest action in the series and more gripping emotional moments than whatever Oscar bait mumblecore film is popular at the time. Todd knows how to get people hyped. Todd is the demiurge of gaming. Buy Skyrim. Also, this game's settlement system is dumb. Also, the pipe weapons are cool, and the entire game should have been only pipe weapons, but with like 10 times more customization. Anyway, back to the woods. So those are most of my opinions on Fallout 4. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing. But subscribing isn't enough anymore, alright? We gotta get the likes. We gotta get the comments. We gotta turn on the bell, the notifications. We gotta turn on all notifications... We gotta follow me on Twitter, at ProbablyJacobIO. We gotta go to the Twitch channel, twitch.com slash ProbablyJacobLive. We gotta go to patreon.com slash ProbablyJacob, where, for as little as $2 a month, you too can have exclusive access to podcast episodes. My podcast, Inherently Optimistic, is available everywhere podcasts are, except for I haven't put it on Spotify yet. And let me give you a little tip. I am partnered with GOG, so if you go down 
into the comments and probably the description, I don't know, there's going to be some links to all of the Fallout games over on GOG. So if you want to play Fallout 1 through uh, 4 and also New Vegas and also Tactics probably, I don't fucking know, those links will be down there. And maybe, if you're lucky, depending on when you watch this video, some of them might even be on sale. So go ahead and buy some Fallout games to support the channel over at GOG. Thanks, GOG. Anyway, I'm tired of getting wet in the woods, so uh, I'll see you in the next video.